Oh my gosh, this is huge! This is something that I printed in 2017. It was a model that I printed when I was reviewing the BCN Sigma R17. I said at the time, I believe it's a Whoville inspired design. And look at this, it works. It friggin' works. It's, it's, it's got drawers and it's, it's a wiggly, you know, chest and you can, you can put them back in. Oh my gosh, I got them all right, look at that. Designs like this, I thoroughly enjoy because they're whimsical and fun and provide us with a method of showcasing 3D printing, doing something that's still somewhat familiar, but delving into the, wow, I can't believe we brought this into meat space. And so this is cool, which is why I was elated when producer David showed me this model. Not this one though, this is PCB Way. This is 3D Printing Nerd Studio powered by PCB Way, and you get 8% off your first order using a link in the description. That's like free money. <laughs> the model in question is by Rogue Designs, and it's over on Colts 3D, and it's Alice's Fantasy Furnishings. And you've got yourself a chest of drawers here, and you've got yourself a dresser, and I was so happy producer David showed me these because I got to printing them right away. The white material, I believe, is, uh, is some Prusa Mint. And the drawers themselves, well, the, these are High Five Blue drawers. And these drawers are printed in a Wuxin PLA that's red, as you can see. But the, the drawers all, all work. Oh, these ones have a surprise. I ran out of high five blue and had to stick some Polymaker in there. So the, the knobs were printed separately. The drawers themselves were printed on my Mark IV farm. Some of them did require supports uh, because the knobs were separate, then the, the drawers could print and then the back of them was kind of upright. And if there wasn't any straight lines to create bridging, then I needed supports. And I just used the snug supports and Prusa slicer and they popped off like you wouldn't believe. And it was glorious, absolutely glorious. This one was printed on my Mark IV-S really fast and I enjoyed watching that. This one, slightly too big for the Mark IV platform, so printed on my Prusa XL. This isn't it though, because these are cool. These are really, really cool. You should print these, but there's one in particular that was, was just perfection. Oh, what a delight. This is the haunted chest of drawers in that Rogue Designs collection. Just look at it. Just look at it. It's so cool. It's so cool. So all of these drawers, obviously, printed on the Mark IV farm. But let's let's go through the drawers, because look at this. This, the yellow one, that's Prusament right there. This is going to be Elegoo PLA. This, High Five Blue from Protopasta. You know we love that. This, oh, this is Polymaker's Panchroma material. Panchroma. So that's a special drawer right there. Ah. This is going to be the A, which one is this? I believe this is the Anycubic purple, the Anycubic purple. This is gonna be that Polymaker material. This is gonna be that Wuxin Red PLA. This is gonna be Nebula from Protopasta. Oh, so, so good. And this is Polymaker PLA. I, I love this. I, I love the design of it. I, I love how it is haunted in that some sort of otherworldly spirit has split it down the middle a bit, but the drawers still function. And I had to print them in a bunch of different colors because I really, really enjoyed that. And again, the Mark IV farm took care of the drawers and the knobs and it, it just worked with the snug supports. It just worked. Now, if you know anything about the, the way I go about things here, I tend to embiggen things. Bam! <laughs> this wonderful project. If we take this, we, we, we take this one that I, that I know and love, perhaps I take the white part, the outer part, and I print that 
on the modified Orange Storm Giga using a little more than seven kilograms of Polymaker material. And what if I used the same colors and materials, but for drawers that were sized, say, at 350% scale? Those aren't gonna fit on typical machines. I would have to do some trickery. And so the, the plain cut tool and Prusa slicer came in. You know what? I should just show you, shouldn't I? Oh, look, look at this. Look at it. <laughs> oh, this is such a good time. This is such a good time. Oh, again, little more than seven kilograms worth of Polymaker material and the drawers themselves. Well, I can just, I can just, I can show you. So if we take this Prusament drawer out and we inspect it, we kind of see a line right around here. These were gonna be too big for the Mark IV platform standing like this or, or going like this. What I did is I utilized the plain cut tool and produce a slicer and I just cut it right in the middle. And that way the back part could sit on the build plate and the front part minus the pull tab or the drawer pull or the doorknob, the knobby thing, that is printed separately. So then this could sit flat and this could sit flat and it can just, print all the live long day long. And of course, these are butt joints and the best way to adhere butt joints is 3D glue. I believe I proved that in my backyard on my swing set so many years ago. I love you. So 3D glue was used to join the two halves of the drawers and then I just would put them in there. And they all are fabulous, but I mean, look at the size of that. Look at, that's a that's an actual drawer. Like I could keep my socks and underwear in there. But if we're talking about some really cool colors, what if, what if we take this one out and we see kind of a tiger striping there? And I didn't know that was going to be apparent in the anti-cubic material, but I love it. A Cheshire cat. And I also apparently love 3D gloop enough to put way too much on there. Yeah, that, that happened. <laughs> For this one, this very large drawer right here in Protopasta's Nebula, I was attempting to do this on the SVO8 and I kept running into error code eight problems. And I actually tweeted about this. And, and, and I thought by removing the Moonraker Obico that was installed, it was, it was spamming the log file. And I thought maybe that was consuming cycles and keeping the MCU from talking to the head MCU. Uh, and I did get a successful print after that and then I didn't and I was like, ah. So I'm still working with Soval to get that working. But uh, what I did is I had set the Soval SVO8 and the Voron right next to it, just printing away. Printing, printing, printing. And then I came in the next day, the Voron, was printing or done and the Soval had stopped. And so the Voron, my Voron, my V2.4 350 from LDO Motors is the one that printed this drawer. So that's, that's friggin' awesome. Also, remember the materials that I used for this. And this was that Panchroma one from Polymaker, right? <laughs> Look at that, that is a special drawer right there. On the other one, you know, the tiny 100% scale one, you don't get to see a lot of the color changes because even though they're pretty tight, it's still not utilizing enough material in order to pass through enough of the color changes. But with these big 350% scale drawers, you run through a lot of the color changes. And the Polymaker Panchroma is absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. So 3D printing furniture, we're at that point now. If we have ourselves large enough machines and enough material, you can actually 3D print furniture. Is it worth it? One of the reasons why I did this was just to see if I could. But when we compute the cost of things, we talk about the drawers, it's half a kilogram ish. And then we get to the larger ones, which are between six and 700 grams. And then when we talk about the white part, that is just over seven kilograms of Polymaker material. 
and you know the type of filaments I used here. So if we compute the cost that this would be retail, is it worth it? And it might not be. Goodness. I adore this. And for me, I think it could be worth it because I wouldn't be able to create this in any other way. I can do some woodworking, but I'm not talented enough to create this shape with these specific drawers in wood. I, I can't. In fact, I hey, I, I know a lot of really talented woodworkers out there who are furniture builders and more. And if you want, I would love to challenge you to build this at this scale, but out of wood. If you do and you post it online, please tag me. I would love to see it. The scale of this just is bonkers because you, you, you put that right there and it's it's 350% scale. This is 100% scale. There's small, medium, and large that Rogue Designs offers of this and this and this. And uh, these are the large versions. These are the large versions. <laughs> well, thanks for coming along on this journey. It was, it was quite a journey in doing this because I had... I had this printed and I had posted to Instagram and Twitter 3D printing furniture and I, you know, I, I did that. And then I was sort of done and then I realized there were knobs and then I had to run around and get those printed and I did those on the Mark 3.5 and the Mark 4s. And then I was like, oh, wait a minute, there's these two other designs, I wanna print those. Oh, I gotta print the drawers for these. Oh, I have to print the knobs for these. And so I had this and this without the knobs as of this morning and all of today, I ran my print farm like crazy, getting the knobs, getting the drawers and getting these done. It's exciting for me to be able to show this to you, but at the same time, there's this amazing feeling of triumph that I did it. I got it done. You did it, you did it. And I, and I, and I hope you adore it too. I, I, I would love to bring this somewhere. I would love to show it off in person. Let me know if I should keep my socks and underwear in here because why not? If you made this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more, fight for a cause you believe in, and print all the really big things! <laughs> and as always, high five.